I'm John Levensold, and in this video we're going to be putting together the shopping cart row for subtotals and shipping. Let's get started. So that's the beginning of our shopping cart. We also need to have a row for the shipping and basically to have our total and our subtotal and all of that fun business. So to do that we're going to have a very similar kind of template, except it's just going to have the shipping cost. So I'm going to create, if I go back to my Add to Cart page, after putting down all of the line items, I'm going to want to render a row that's just going to have the shipping cost. So I'm going to just do echo. Render shopping cart shipping row. And I'm just going to pass in the shopping cart as an object. And I'm going to let whatever comes out of there to get printed to uh, this particular page. So just like I have render shopping cart row here where we pass in the product ID and the shopping cart and the line item counter, here we're going to just pass in the shopping cart object and render shopping cart shipping row is going to render the shipping row for our, our bill that we're going to be showing our users. So here, I'm just going to create a new function, and I'm going to call this render shopping cart shipping row. And I'm going to pass in a shopping cart object called shopping cart. Now, we could also do this for taxes as well. We could render shopping cart tax row, or if we had like a promo code row, then we could also do that as well. But the shipping is just an easy example and you'll probably have to do that for your shopping cart anyways. So now I'm gonna say I want to return a new table row. I need to close that table row and it's a three column table. And we're just gonna return that. Now we obviously need to get the the cost so in order to do that, I'm just going to here and I'm going to say, okay, uh, we're going to say shopping cart, get shipping cost. And what that's, that doesn't exist quite yet, but basically it's going to go and it's going to give us the whole shipping cost for the shopping cart. So let's go back to the shopping cart object and let's create the code for get shipping cost. So we've got get sh shipping cost for a particular price. We've got get item shipping cost. So now getting the shipping cost of the whole order isn't that isn't that difficult. We just create a new public function called get shipping cost. Pass in, we actually don't pass anything in. And we'll start with the total which equals 0, so it's nothing. And then we go in and we say for each this items as product ID and the quantity. So this is a key value pair. So the product ID is the key and the quantity is the value. The total equals whatever the total was plus this get item shipping cost for a particular product ID. So it's just going through and it's basically running the same get item shipping cost which it in turn is going to call get shipping cost for and it's going to pass in the price of a particular item. So by describing everything that we're doing along the way these each one of these functions can be you know three or four lines and can do very very powerful procedures for calculating our, our rules, our business rules and at the bottom here I'm just gonna say return the total so if I go back you'll see that this is our essentially our shipping cost so we've got 65 bucks for cumin six times and $1.99 for the pasta and $17.91 for the tomato soup cans and if we add all this up our shipping cost is $85 and our cost of our order is something around a hundred or so dollars. 
So let's just clean up the template a bit. And we need to add a dollar sign here. And we'll put shipping here. If I refresh this, I'll have shipping. Perfect. Now, the last row is, of course, the total. So I'm going to go back to Add to Cart, and I'm going to say Echo, Render, Shopping, Cart, Total Row. And I'm going to pass in the same shopping cart object here, too. We'll go back to Templates. I'm just going to take this, copy it, paste it, render shopping cart total row and this is going to look very similar it's going to say total and here we're going to say shopping cart get total and I think that's going to be the last method that we have to add to our shopping cart so we're going to create public function get total And we probably want to add some tax here and stuff. So I'm just going to say add tax here, and you can do that on your own. But what we want to do is we want to return this get subtotal, which we haven't created yet, times or plus this get shipping cost. So it's the shipping cost plus the subtotal. And we'd also want to add the tax in here as well. So we need to create one more method, one more function, which will be public function get subtotal and get subtotal is also going to look a little like shipping cost we'll start with a total of zero and then we'll go in and we'll say for each this items as product ID and then quantity we actually don't need the curly braces we're going to say that the total is equal to the total plus, and we've already written this code, so we'll take advantage of it again, which is this get item cost, and we'll pass in the product ID. So the nice thing about object-oriented programming is that you're actually reusing a lot of the functionality that you're already creating in different instances. And then I'm just going to return the total. So again, very simple function. We're taking the subtotal and the shipping cost, we're adding it together, and that's how we get the total. So if I go back here, we've got the shipping, and then we've got the actual total here. Now, I don't think we need the shipping amount and the unit cost for all of these anymore, so I'm just going to pull that out for now. And that'll clean it up a bit. And there you have it. In the next video, we're going to create the view cart page and we'll start looking at the PayPal API or the PayPal uh, integration and that should be it. Thanks a lot for listening. I'm John Levensold.